I will, I will, picking up, picking up where we had, sorry for that interruption, but picking up where, where, where we left off, we were speaking about, um, we were speaking about how the religion of the foreigners, how when the foreign religion, we were referring to His Majesty's speech on spirituality, His Majesty speaks on spirituality, where he pointed out how the religion of the foreigners and, and, the, and the foreign perversion of even our own ethnic faiths, whether it be um, Judaism to a, a far lesser extent. You understand? Now, because many of our people are, are becoming disorientated from their true Ethiopic roots, it's more likely now than even ever before that this, um, this uh, um, foreign religion, the foreign aspect, even when we're studying Torah, we're making sure that we're referencing this according to the Ethiopic scrolls, His Majesty's Bible, and what we know of who we are, our identity, you understand, and what our own view, you understand, our own ancient and, and still living view of this is. You understand? But let's just continue with this particular Sabbath. We'll touch on it, hopefully. These, these issues, a lot of these issues come around, um, we can say, come around regularly. This is the, where the redundancy is in the scripture. So if you find something that you think you might be familiar with, do not avoid that and say, oh, I know it already. But go through it again because you'll find that, uh, like they say in the West, the devil's in the detail. You know what I'm saying? But really the truth is in the detail. You know what I'm saying? The truth is in the details. I don't know why they always say the devil's in the detail. They're giving the devil more, more power than it's really due, and therefore we just say fire bun that right there. But anyway, um Abitu Ante Barukne. For this uh sabbatical, we're gonna continue we're gonna continue with um the overview here that we find. The first part of this overview is where Moshe Muse he asks to see the land. Because Moses basically has already been told that because of what happened and how Moses did not give proper glory. And this is the key with the 40-year generation. And we should see this is also a key with those 40, that 40-year 40 generation of, of lost sheep in the Americas and Caribbean, our Afro-American, our um, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-even Hispanic ancestors, many of them who can recall some of them seeing Haile Selassie, some of them recall what was going on in those days and time. And when we come to a lot of them today and we remind them, some of them are, are, are pleasantly surprised in a sense, but then there's also a little bit of regret because some of them begin to really recognize and know what has happened. You understand that we basically have experienced again. We're at the end, in a sense, of that 40-year period for us in the diaspora. This is why this is a significant time as well as an opportunity. This whole crisis over the debt, this whole um, crisis of what's going on in the Horn of Africa and globally, if we stay faithful, you understand, faithfully, you understand, obedient to the leadings of the Holy Spirit in the name of Abu Qadus, in the name of God and Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, we can see how he's leading us through this, just like a Red Sea. There's water on one side, there's a wall of water on the next side, but he's saying go straight through. In other words, don't turn to the left and don't turn to the right. You understand, don't uh, blue, red, these are both our holy colors. You know what I'm saying? So don't just choose blue over red or red over blue or white over red and blue or vice versa or confused and mixed. No. These, know, your, know thyself because to separate a man or people from the knowledge of self is to separate them from the, themselves. And this is what creates this, this psychoticness, this craziness that we know as niggers. This is what creates the craziness. This is the byword. This is the biblical byword that proves who are the real ethnic Hebrews and who was this prophetic word in scriptures speaking of and concerning, firstly and foremostly, because the Almighty has sovereign right to choose whom he will. And we have not chosen ourselves. In fact, we thought, we thought before knowledge of ourselves that, you know, that, that, that we ain't, 
and they say, shit, you know, we ain't nothing if we were to believe white supremacy and believe the lies of the media. Now that we find this, you understand, now that we found love, the love of God in Christ, the question is, what are we going to do? And what are you going to do? What we advise is to study and to show thyself approved. So this is another level of our study, which is the Torah scroll um, readings and feedings, seeing that this is Sabbath time, remembering the Sabbath and keeping it set apart. As Once again, we'll point this out. You can download this right here, um, Sabbath House um, uh, readings, which has the the sabbatical readings and feedings, and to know where we're at right now for this particular, as we're in the first um, week in the, in the month of August, according to the Western Roman um, um, calendar, um, the first week of the month of August is the 45th, the 45th uh, sabbatical um, reading and feeding Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to Deuteronomy 7, 11. 7-Eleven. I know one can read something into the 7-Eleven too, but let's get into the main part of this. So here we find that Moses, Moshe, he asked to see the land. Now, Moshe, he pleaded with Ha Elohim to let him cross over and see the land on the other side of the Jordanos winds or the Jordan River in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to 25. And here in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to 25, it says, And I besought Yahweh at that time, saying, O Adoni, Yah, Adoni Yahweh, thou hast begun to shew, to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand, thy right hand, thy Yah, thy Yad, thy Yemen. For what Elohim is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according, and according to thy might? I pray thee, make me go over, let me go over and see the good land. See the what? What's that word? Good. The tobe. The tobe. Remember we touched on Tob and the, the real name for Ethiopia, Ethiopia, which is called the Tob or Tobia, where the Greeks heard that and understood that as, as Aethiopis, you understand, or what we know as Ethiopia in that sense, but it comes from the archaic Tobia, which at the root means Tob, which is good, to say good in the Hebrew, to see the Tob or the Tob land that is beyond Jordanos, that goodly, Notice it's identifying Ethiopia even more. I'm talking about greater Ethiopia, continental Ethiopia. You understand where it says that goodly, that goodly, again using the idea and sense of Tob, that goodly mountain and Libanos. So when we look at the true scope of that holy land, the, the holy land according to Genesis chapter 15, verse 18, it extends from the river of Euphrates, you know what I'm saying? All up there by like Syria. And then, you know, Syria's in the news too. This is why all these places are in the news. The Almighty recognizing and see this, this coming out, this reawakening, this, this renaissance, this renaissance, this rebirth. You know what I'm saying? And he's causing the elements, these hegemonic, as my earthly would have said, reverses to happen. Because, and largely due to the meddling, of the Aropawian or the European, the so-called white man. He's meddled so much in so many things that there's now unforeseen consequences to this meddling. So we need to know who we are so we're not just caught as a dare in the headlights, you know, with this economic downturn, so forth and so on. You see, only the lost sheep, you understand, like lost sheep, you know, lost, you know sheep, if the sheep don't have a shepherd and the shepherd is not guiding the sheep, the sheep will, one sheep will go over a mountain. It's the most horrible sight. It's the truly one of the most horrible sights in, in, in creation is to see sheep, you know what I'm saying, sheep, go over a mountain. One sheep will, at the, at the edge of a cliff, one sheep will go over, kill itself. If you look over, you'll see the bloody, the red, and the bloody sheep. You understand, who have lost their lives following the sheep before it. And they will continue to do that, continue to do that until a shepherd or someone stops them and takes, you know, takes management, takes control of it. But 
when the Almighty calls us lost sheep as well. It's very important to see the correspondence between this, um, this verbal hieroglyph, speaking of the people as sheep, because in that this metaphor, this seminar work, this uh, mish, mishle or misale, this example, this parabolic simile, you can go on with words if you want to, but the, you get the basic idea. This kind of comparative between sheep and lost sheep, sheep that have no shepherd, and the state, the present state of so-called Negroes, black folks, lost sheep, you understand, in the Americas and the Caribbean. This is what's happening right now. You understand? Most people, when you told them about, oh, about Africa, they're going to tell you, make one excuse or another about it. And the, the problem, the, the reason why it doesn't get any resonance with them is because they don't know who they are. They refuse to accept it. And maybe they cannot accept it because maybe they are not Hebrews. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe they're not. Yeah, they're black. Yeah, they could be your family member. But it doesn't mean they have, they're not spiritually Israel. They are not spiritually Israelites. Maybe they are according to, yeah, you're my black brother. No, you're not. No, you're not. I mean, you're my black brother. No, see, see, the black and brother, black does not qualify brotherhood. Black qualifies the white supremacist concocted uh, nonsense, this mess. You see, because there's no way that you see before the white man came along that the peoples qualified themselves like, like that. Even when there were lepers, clean lepers, and different distinctions of people, they never qualified themselves like that. Maybe culturally, they would look at culturally or what this particular society did or how they behaved, what were their morals or mores or lack thereof. That's how they qualified each other. The situation with Miriam and Moses' Ethiopian wife was cultural. It was not racial to say that, well, Miriam was a so-called white um, German-Polish Jew woman, no, and, 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 and Moses, Ethiopian wife, she was like an Ethiopian woman today, and that was the racial divide between them. That's nonsense. But a lot of them make believe that, you understand? But we should know ourselves so we won't have to believe that. But the important thing right here we were talking about is the scope of the land. The scope of the land basically is from the river of Egypt, according to, Deuteron uh, uh, according to Deuteronomy as well, but firstly, according to Genesis 15 and 18. So I get into these arguments sometimes, sometimes, because sometimes you're not going to, you know, um, um, answer uh, not a fool according to his folly, so they're not why, uh, I mean, so you don't be just like them, or you I might answer a fool according to his folly, so the fool is not wise in their own conceit. So after we reason for a couple of, maybe Hebrews writes a couple, then they want to talk about that Israel is just that little beachfront property that the white Jews got to the United Nations in 1948, and then want to talk about Torah and, 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 and Bible, and you're studying, you're not studying nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're caught up in a, in a cult level, a cult level of black Hebraicism but not the true culture. Because when you come to the true cultural level, you must find Ethiopia there. You must find the Ethiopian Hebrew identity there. Otherwise, you're, you're lost, plain and simple. We're drawing the line on this, and ones can, you know, learn it for themselves or, or have to burn by themselves. So be it. Yovas, um, exiliyaukal. Again, but on the other hand, the true scope is from the river of Egypt, which goes all the way down to South Africa, where we find Hebrew, African Hebrew peoples called the Lemba people. You understand that we have Ethiopia, we find Hebrew peoples there. Even that new uh, nation in the Sudan, southern Sudan, they may call themselves Christians, you understand? But a true Hebrew, you understand, is supposed to, you understand, in that sense, graduate to that level of the Mashiach or the Mashi, the Moshiach, to that Messiahship level. So you hear some people talk about Messianic Jews and Messianic Hebrews. They're just messing around, you understand, because they don't want to acknowledge Christ. You, you know, you know they, are, they are trying to so-called split hairs on what is a, a plain, simple, factual, scriptural, biblical, historical point. You understand? And we can't follow after that, and we can't go for that. So the true level of the land Moses wants to get to that ideal vantage point where he can see even in the distance, 
You understand? The good land, the Tob land, Tobia, and therefore the fullness of Ethiopia. What we're saying is from, from the river of Egypt all the way to the river of the Euphrates, that's just before you go into Babylon, is our land. Our whole, that means Arabia, you understand? North Arabia, the desert of Arabia, South Arabia, Mecca, all of that, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, Somalia, you understand? Uganda, Zimbabwe, um, Angola, you understand? All of that, all of that is what Yahweh and Loheno gave to us. So either we're going to, either we're going to recognize that, 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 that Ha Elohim, Elohim is true, and every man that want to contradict that is a liar, or we're saying he's a liar. And if we do, we might end up like those 40-year Israelites, you understand, wandering through the desert with good shoes and good clothing. There's a little pun in the scripture, I don't know if you've read it, but where Yahweh says that those disobedient, gainsaying Israelites, like a lot of niggas today, he allowed them to wander in the wilderness. But they had good shoes, their shoes didn't wear out, their sandals, they had good sh kicks, you know. Um, they had good clothing, they had, they had food. You understand? So, so their clothing and their shoes didn't wear out, which is so interesting because the main thing that lost sheep are so caught up on, their clothing and their, you know, their, 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 their clothing, shoes and, 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 and what they're wearing and so forth. So and they're eating all these unclean foods and wondering why ones are out of shape and in bad health. You understand? Um, it, it's a shame. But here we have to remember that Elohim, Ha Elohim, he was wrathful. He was angry also with Moshe and would not listen, telling Moshe never to speak of the matter again. He told him, don't even, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I am not hearing you. Mm -mm. Don't, don't even speak about that again. And so uh, Moshe, Musa, Moses, he, he blamed his punishments on the Beta Israel. You, you know, you hear a lot of our, some of our elders, and my earthly father, Yahweh, if he will bless his soul, he said this too, in a sense, you know, almost like you can't do nothing for niggas. You know, you get the black folks, you know, there's black folks, and if you do anything with black folks, they won't appreciate it. And black folks, you hear this kind of blaming, so we can see even the psychology. This helps us to work out our psychology. We don't need all those drugs and all those pharmaceuticals and sorceries and everything like that. You understand? Um, but like they say, consult your doctor first. Our doctor is Kitachin Jesus Christos. He's the great physician. But Moses blamed his punishment on the Beta Israel. We find this in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 26. But Yahweh was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And Yahweh said to me, let it suffice thee. Speak no more to me of this matter, of this matter. So Ha Elohim, he directed Moshe to climb the summit of a mount called Fiskal Pisgah and to gaze about to look at the land. In other words, get to a certain vantage point and get to see the land, right? Deuteronomy uh, 3 and 27. And Ha Elohim told Moses now to give Iyasu or Yashu, to give Shu now, his instructions. Now, Ma will pass this on to Shu. Ma, Shu, Moshe, if you over is what we're speaking about, but we'll, we'll go into that at another time. We're speaking about the wisdom out of ancient Egypt where there's Ma or Ma, Shu, and then his successor is Shu, like Moses, and his successor is Yahoshua or Yeshua. His instructions and to imbue him to imbue him with strength and courage, to place in him this strength and this courage, for Joshua, Iyasu, would lead the people and he would allot them, in other words, portion to them the land, according to Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 28. So it says, get thee up to the top of Pisgah and lift up thy eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward, in other words, make the sign of a cross. You know, look in the four directions, the four cardinal points, and behold it with thine eyes. So he basically told them to look all around. He said, look all around you. Well, he said, get up to Mount Pisgah, right? Right? And lift up thine eyes. 
the EAs westward and northward and southward and eastward. He said, look around, look around, look around. Look around and behold it with thine eyes. For thou shalt not go over this, this Jordanos, Jordanos, this Jordan. But charge Iyasu, Yeshua, Yehoshua, and encourage him, encourage him. Put courage into him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit. It's the Iyasu type which will cause now the inheritance of the land which thou shalt see. So our ancestors saw Ethiopia in a sense like Moses did. They saw it on TV. They saw the famine. You know, um, both in the 70s, 74, 75, they seen the war. They seen every time there's a famine. That's all they show you about East Africa and Ethiopia, whatever, and the famine. They don't show you nothing else. So they saw the land, but they did not go in. Forty years had to pass. So now we're in that prophetic level of 40 years passing in this 2011 as we're going into 20, 2012. So we abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. Now remember Peoria, Beth Peor? That's where that sin was going on. And we liken that sin to what's happening even with, with black culture now and, and the over-sexualization of, of the boys, black boys and girls um, through the music and through the media and through these little, excuse my language, shit shows on TV and, and movies and, and, and all this other stuff where, you know, we have the strip joints and we have how black men treat women, the misogyny and, and, and all the rest of that, which are really valid, really valid issues you know, really valid issues, but this is likened to Beth Peor. So they encamp, but they encamp over against, opposite. In other words, before, it's like when David says, David, David says in the psalm, my sin is always before my face. In, in other words, how I got into the sin, what I did is always there. You understand? And I don't know whether he was saying the woman, um, um, Belisabe, Bathsheba, you understand, and anticipating he would have children with her. I don't know if he was thinking that. But in this case right here, in chapter 3 and, 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 and 29, they, they, they encamped over against Beth Peor. That's where the strip joints and the demonic temples and the clubs were. They encamped over against. They saw this before them. You understand? Now they had the promised land coming up, but they had to look, in a sense, look on your sin. Look on where you fell short. Now, furthermore, there are arguments to obey the hug. There are arguments to obey or read Torah. Now, Moshe, Moshe Musa, he exhorted, and exhort means to build them up, to build them up. And we hope that our preaching and teaching can help to build up. You understand, the black Hebrew, the Ethiopian Hebrew, the Lek Arastafari, you understand, and even our black Hebrew Israelites who begin to recognize that what we're saying is hak, you understand, is hug, you understand, is truth. You understand, check it out for yourself and prove us wrong. Our ancestors recognize, our African-American ancestors recognize the Ethiopian Hebrews and Kedamawi Hala Selassie and that true root in Ethiopia. So who are you, a so-called project Jew? You understand? A ghetto Israelite to deny that. You deny our ancestors, our heritage, and act like you know better than them. You understand? Remember Rehoboam. Remember the Kore. You understand? The, the, the children of Kore and, and Kore. Remember that rebellion there. You understand? Because when this heats up, whom Yahweh has elected, you understand, ones now want to deject or stand in the way. If this ministry of the King of Kings and his Christ is to be the spearhead of this, Please, check it out for yourself. Reason, let's reason about it. But don't go off half-cocked like a lot of um, the Israelites did before the disobedient, the game saying, we see what became of them. Don't think that Yahweh's hand is short, you understand, to, to, to reach you even today. You understand? We declare peace, you understand? But if, if our peace come back to us, then we know, you understand, that it's war. And Yahweh instructs us, in war, you understand? So 
you know, words of the wise should be sufficient, but here's an argument to obey the law. Mo Moses exhorted the Israelites, the Beit Israel, to heed um, Elohim's laws and not to add anything. Don't add anything to them and not to take away anything from them so that they might live to enter and occupy the land that Ha Elohim was giving them. This is so crucial, so important. To do this is so that you might, you, I, and I, and I might live in order to enter. If we don't live, we can't enter. You understand? But in order to live, to enter, we keep his way. So this is one of the main, the first and primary arguments for obedience. Obedience trumps all that wishy-washy, mixed-up mood attitude, pseudo-love that people want to talk about. Y'all love, just love. It's only love. You know, you know what I think? No, I don't want to know what you think. I want to know what you think about what Yahweh says. I don't want to know what you think. I want to know what you think about what Yahweh says. You understand? So I can tell whether you're my brother, sister, or, or mother spiritually, because we only have one father, Abba Kedus, in this spirituality. You understand? On this level of spirituality, but honor your father and your mother so that you might live. Now, this is Deuteronomy 4, 1 to 2. So now we're in the next chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 1 to 2. Now, Mo Moses, Moshe, he noted that in the sin of the Baal uh, uh, Fegor or Peor, he noticed that Ha Elohim wiped out every person who followed the Al Peor. Everybody who followed the Al Peor while preserving alive those who held fast to Ha Elohim. He notes that all those who followed the false gods were wiped out, while all those who held fast who were faithful and true to our Father and the Messiah, or to the Father and Son, to the one God. You understand, Yahweh Ahad, that they were preserved alive, Deuteronomy 4, verses 3 to 4. Now, Moses now argues now that observing the laws, obser observing Torah, the Orit, faithfully, would prove to other peoples, you see, here's the real, here's what we have to prove to the other nations and the other people. We will prove to other peoples that the Beta Israel's wisdom, that our chokmah, our tibet, you understand, and discernment, and the bina, and the masterwal, you understand, for no other great nation had a god, or what they considered to be a god, so close at hand. None of them as Yahweh and Elohe Israel. And no other great nation had laws, rules, regulations as perfect as our Godfathers. You understand? Know, as perfect as Yahweh, El Elohe, Israel. And he mentions this in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Now, Moses, Musa, he also urged, he urged the Beit Israel to take utmost care. Be very careful not to forget, not to forget the things that they saw. So now this is an instruction to us to not forget what we're learning here as well. You understand? Not to forget the things that they saw and not to forget the things that are recorded here in Torah. You understand? And to make them known to their what? Children and their children's children. The question is, how many of us have made these known to our children? So we might have another generation actually that's lost too. Only the mercy of, of, of God in Christ will prevent another lost generation of so-called black children, or Beta Israel, um, Ethiopian Hebrew children. We're to make this known to our children and children's children. You understand? No ifs, ands, well, if you like. No, no, no. You, this, 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 is, this is what you do. You understand? No, no question about it. You understand? It's proven itself. You understand? And it's part of the al Kidan, It's part of our covenant. And, and it's, it's what keeps us in good standing in our covenant. Because outside of that, we have to deal with all this, all this, ignorant, all this ignorant bleep, expletive, deleted, deleted. You know, we have to deal with all of that. Now, how they stood before Ha Elohim at Horeb or Koreb, the mountain was ablaze with flames. Ha Elohim spoke to them out of the fire. How Elohim declared to them the Ten Commandments, really the Ten Words or the Decalogue, because it's one. It's one commandment, not ten. It's ten words. That's a very important distinction right there. Deuteronomy 4, verses 9 to 13. Now, at the same time, Ha Elohim 
commanded Moshe, Musa, to impart to the Beit Israel laws for them to observe in the land that they were about to occupy. In other words, there are certain laws that we have to learn to observe so that when we come out of this so-called Babylon and spiritual Egypt, you know what I'm and we go into whether Shashimene or another part of our promised land, you understand, so that we can live together, grow, prosper, and thrive, there are laws, rules, and regulations that we have to learn in order to observe when we occupy this land. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. Now, I know there are some that might say, well, there's other people there. What about the other people there? Listen, this is between our father and his children, first and foremost. We will do good for them, you understand, as long as they recognize the terms of peace. You understand, of peace. We don't see no peace over there. It's only the black Hebrew Israelites, the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrew, like the Rastafari, that have the peace plan, you understand, for the Middle East. You understand? It's only us that can bring peace to the Middle East. You understand? The white man, the so-called um, 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 uh, converted Jew, uh, Zionists, and, and others, crypto Jew, they haven't brought no peace to that. It's, it's kind of evident and obvious. You understand? But racism prevents them from accepting what we're saying as true. But time will tell. Because the Beta Israel saw no shape, they didn't see any shape when Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, spoke to them out of the fire at Koreb or Horeb. Moshe, he warned them not to make for themselves a sculptured image. Now, a lot of people say, well, what about pictures of Hala Selassie? What about that? See, don't be a dumb dumb. Don't be, don't be, don't, don't be stupid. And I'm not calling nobody personally stupid, but, you know, don't be, don't be ignorant. You understand? It's a sculptured image in whatever uh, and, and, and whatever likeness, it's an it's a, it's a idol to say that this idol that I've made with my hand from my imagination is my God. You understand? When we talk about the true and the living man and that God made man in his own image and after his similitude, you understand? Then there's no contradiction, you understand, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, being the, the son of God, you understand, and his imperial majesty, you understand, representing the fatherhood of God, you understand, our father. Caduce, Abba Tach, and Abba Caduce. You understand? So we, we see him as he is. You understand? But still, don't make for yourself any sculptured image. How this word would really um, do us well in this day and time is with all these products and merchandise. You know, like they take some water, right? And they put the water in a particular package and they put an image on it. And you say, I, I don't like that water right there that came from the river. I want this water in this package. That's, that's the modern form of idolatry, all these logos and sigils and, and names like Nike. I like Nike. Nike is a false god. Now, does that mean you shouldn't wear Nike? I know some brothers who actually, we used to have this reasoning years ago, what they would do is get these, these sneakers like Nike, the rest of them, and they would actually take off the stuff. They would take off all the logo, all the imagery, or they would strip it down beer. Now, some people say, but you spend good money for that. As long as stripping it down didn't affect the integrity of the shoe. You understand? They took off that little Nike symbol and the rest of that stuff off it. You understand? Or cut off the tags or all these things off it. So they're not wearing no idolatry. Because a lot of these things that they're put on the consumer products are idolatry. Look at Revelation where it talks about how Babylon sells everything, even sells the, the souls of men, sells the souls of people. That's the modern idolatry. You understand? But here Moses is warning them not to make for themselves a sculptured image in any likeness, whatever, the form of a man, a woman, a, a, a beast, a bird, a creeping thing, or a fish. Deuteronomy, in other words, now man is going to a high level of spirituality. Now they are, are being able to see, see these old hieroglyphical types in the true um, Tawahido, the oneness and the unified field of reality. You understand? So they're seeing that these, these uh, symbols from before, when they were true or conveyed in true, were like a child growing up having, having um, stuffed animals in a sense. But he has to learn there's a real lion out there, and you can't mess with the, the real lion like your stuffed animal. It's not, it's not a toy. You understand? So these things are used as teaching tools. And when they looked up, now when we looked up and we see the sun, the moon, the stars in heaven, they were not to be lured into bowing down to them. 
You understand? And serving them. Now, what are the sun, the moon, the stars, and the heaven for? It's for sign and season, uh, days and years. It's, it's for timekeeping. You understand? It's for timekeeping. It's not for us to look at it and say, oh, that's our God up there, that star or something like that, and bow down to see the reflection of the sun or the moon and then shine on our face, and then we say we're blessed by the gods like man, the heathen and even a lot of the Mohammedans are still doing to this day, worshiping, worshiping idols. But we're not to bow down and serve them. For Ha Elohim allotted those things to other peoples. Those are other people's religions. We don't have to follow their, their religion for spirituality. That's for them. You understand? But Ha Elohim had took the Beit Israel and brought us out of the underworld, out of the, the, the spiritual Egypt in that sense, to be Jah's, Yah's very own people, to be his very own people, his particular, his peculiar treasure. So he chose us for a particular reason. So for us, multiculturalism, you, you know what I'm saying, it really doesn't do us too, too well. We, multiculturalism for us is, well, that's your God, that's your culture, that's your vine, that's your fig tree. This is our God, this is our culture, this is our vine, this is our fig tree. And now if we can live like that, then maybe there will be some peace in the world. But if you want to force idolatry and Babylon and worldliness on us who have come out of it already, you understand? Well, a real decision needs to be made by each of us, and hopefully we'll make the same right and true and good decision collectively. You understand? We will fight if necessary as we are confident in the victory of good over evil. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. Now, Moses said that Ha Elohim was angry with him on account of the Beta Israel. He blamed the people. And ha, ha Elohim, he swore that Moses would not enter the land, but would die in the land east of the Jordanos, or the word Danos, the Jordan winds, the Jordan River, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 21 to 22. Now, Musa cautioned, cautioned, he cautioned the Beta Israel not to forget. You understand? Not to forget the Kal Kidan, the word agreement. N not to forget the, um, the Benai Barit. You understand? Not to forget the covenant that Ha Elohim Baruch Hu concluded with our ancestors and therefore by extension with I and I and I. And not to make a sculptured image for Ha Elohim is a what? He is a consuming fire. In other words, he is an impassioned or a zealous, not jealous, even though there is some relationship in those words, but he is a zealous God. But the main thing is that he is a consuming fire. Mm. So fire is an aspect that is associated. Now what's interesting that when we look at the Hebrew, look at the Hebrew Yah or Yod, if you look at the Hebrew Yod, it looks like a flame. It looks like almost like this part of the hand right here. The Hebrew, the Hebrew um, 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 Y or I sound, the, 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 what they call the Yod or the Yod. And Yod means hand, and Id in the Ethiopic means hand, and we have Yemen, which means right hand. And remember that black power fist from the 1960s? But they did not know. They did not know. You understand? But Yahweh was guiding them even, even then even 40 years ago, but we see what happened to that 40-year generation that bit the bait of, of, civil, of civil rights, you understand, and, um, and affirmative action. Now we have the so-called first African-American president, and it seems like this ruin called America is under his, under, under his watch. Mm. It's amazing. It's really amazing in a sense. But to get out of this maze, study and show yourself approved. Now, Moses, he called heaven and earth. Notice now Moses is calling heaven and earth, calling heaven and earth to do what? To witness against the Beta Israel that they should, that, that should they make for themselves a sculpted image. 
You understand? When they were in the land, if they made idols like the other nations, sculpted images in the land and said, this is God. You understand? Then Ha Elohim would scatter them among the people, leaving only a scant few alive. And this remnant that we find, we find in the highlands, the roof of Africa and Ethiopia, the Beta Israel. The, the Ethiopian Hebrews, it is Kedamawi Haile Selassie, and those faithful Ethiopians, they are that scant, the, 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 the Ethiopians who are in covenant in the Al Kidan. You understand, the Ethiopian Hebrews are the true, the true Amhara, the true. Now, make sure you make a note of that. Yeah, uh, the scripture will come later, you understand? But he won't leave a few alive, Deuteronomy 4, 25 to 27. They're in exile. Now, here's what's so very interesting, because this is why I said the connection. I had to go through some of the, some like the foreword and get to this part. Here's what the connection is, because he says that they're in exile. This is where we're at right now, and many Ethiopians for the first time in, in Ethiopian history, you know what I'm saying? Are Ethiopians also in exile in the Gentile occupied and conquered lands of the West like America, the Caribbean, South America, England, and Europe, and so forth and so on. But they're in exile. It says that they, speaking of our ancestors and perhaps many of, many of, many of y'all as well, are serving and would serve man-made gods of wood and stone. Uh-oh. Wood and stone. What's that? That's money. That's money. That's why you have money on um, money is in God we trust. That's money. The dollar bills come from certain types of paper, wood, you understand? And the, the ore that makes the coins come from stone that they worship and serve man-made gods. Man, and they even have their pictures, the white man's pictures that you're your gods that you worship. I like Benjamin. You know what Benjamin means? Benjamin means son of the what? The right hand. Benjamin. You understand? But you don't know that that son of the right hand is really the I. It's really I and I and I. You understand that son of the right hand, technically, it will be Jamaica. You understand? And the Jamaican uh, Ethiopian Hebrews, they will be, be like the Benjamites in this present time, the son of the right hand. But instead, they go after the false Benjamins, the dead presidents the dead and man-made gods of wood and stone, wood, the dollar bills, and stone, the coins, that would not be able to see, hear, eat, or smell. They can't do, they can't do nothing, Deuteronomy 4 and 28. But when they were in distress and they searched for God in their pain, when white man beat them down, you understand, and, and lynched them, when they were in distress and searched for Ha Elohim Baruch Hu with all their soul and heart, and they returned to Ha Elohim Baruch Hu and obeyed El Elohe Israel, then they would find Ha Elohim Baruch Hu even there. So even for us, when we forsake all this nonsense and we turn, and we go within, and we remember the Sabbath, and we keep it set apart and holy, and we seek for him, and we return to him for all of our heart and our soul, and we obey him, we set our minds to be obedient and learn of him, then we will find him even here or there or wherever we are at. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 29 to 30 is, is the more full of scripture reading on that. Now, he says, for Ha Elohim, Yahweh, he is a compassionate Elohim. He is an Elohim of compassion, Mahari, uh, uh, you understand, who would not fail them. He, will, he won't fail us like silver light failed us. He won't fail us like, a, like affirmative action failed us. I hate to say it to you all who are Obamanites. But he won't fail us like it appears that Obama is failing us because, look, the majority of the ones who are suffering are black males who are unemployed, who don't have jobs, who find it hard, difficult, or impossible to feed their families, who families are being broken up over these situations. And, and, and Obama hasn't said really nothing about that because he's playing this politics thing to get reelected. Well, that's good for him, but it ain't good for us. You understand? And a lot of y'all probably voted for him. But, he, but, 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 but the true God, you understand? Our Godfather is a compassionate God who would not fail us. You understand? He won't fail us. 
He won't let us perish. He won't allow us to perish. He won't forget the Kal Kidan, the word agreement. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. He won't forget the covenant that He made, that Ha Elohim made with our ancestors, with our forefathers. Deuteronomy 4 and 31. Now, the next portion. It's, it's coming up, but let's just finish this, and we'll get back to the, the cities of refuge coming up. You know what I'm saying? But let's just finish this part right here. Moses, he invited the Beit Israel to consider, as I'm inviting all of those who are listening or watching this to consider. Consider whether in any time or space any people had ever heard the voice of a God, you know what I'm saying, speaking out of fire. Speaking to them, and that, now there's a mystic to this, even with the Kana Balsam. There's a mystic to it, but before you run after that, run after the word, run after the spirit, run after the wisdom, the knowledge, you understand, of God in Christ. But ask yourself whether in any time or space ever a people have heard the voice of a, a God, you understand, speaking out of fire and survive, or any God had taken one nation, took one nation from the midst of another. Like he's taking us from the midst of another nation, really many other nations, you understand? And that will crash Babylon. Let me just tell you that little secret, open secret, you understand? But it's all going to be done by his Holy Spirit, not by strength or might, but by his spirit. So we need to get into his spirituality level, and that means remembering the sin that, that means keeping it holy, that means studying and showing ourselves approved, and that means, means seeking him for our, our, our soul our heart, you know, and all of our might, our possessions, whatever we have to do His will, you know, but to learn of His will, you know, because some of us get awfully zealous and we do a lot of things hoping it will please Him, but we should have been studying more, studying to show ourselves approved, and then when approved, you know, saying, then we can go to the next, the next level, um, but whether any God had taken one nation from the midst of another, by prodigious acts and awesome power as our God, as Eloheinu, as Amlakachin, Amlakane had done for them in Egypt before their very eyes. And as we taught on in the earlier one, uh, if you go to Jeremiah, if you go to Jeremiah, if you look at what's in, in Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 14 to 15, where it says, Therefore, behold, the days come and say of Yahweh, Buruku, that it shall no more be said, Yahai, Yahai, Jalib, Jalib, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahai, Yahai, Jalib, Jalib, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. That's North America, people. That's North America, where you at? Where you at? You understand? And from all the lands whither he had driven them. Who had drove us there? He drove us there. The white man just, he was like the beast of burden, really. You understand? To accomplish Yahweh's will. You understand? Stop overrating the so-called pecker wood. You understand? And I will bring them again into their land that I gave to their fathers, that he gave to our ancestors. That's Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 14 to 15. So now we're getting the type, the, the, the pattern or the template in the Belui Kidan in the Old Testament. But we're now seeing through the Nabiya, the prophetic, we're seeing how it will be fulfilled in the Hadith Kidan or the Burit Hadasha in the New Covenant, and that is speaking of the present time, you understand, and dispensation of prophetic time that we're in. So know what time it is. You understand? Know what time it is. Deuteronomy 4, 32 to 34, the last part. Now, Moses, Musa, he said that it had been clearly demonstrated to them. And it should be clearly demonstrated to us who are studying and showing ourselves approved. It should be very clearly demonstrated that Yahweh alone, Yahweh Ahad, Ahad alone is Ha Elohim, is the God, is the true, is the true God, the one God. This is Tawahido, is the one God. You understand? And there is none, there is no one, there is no, no one is the one beside Ha Elohim. Not Obama, not, 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 not whoever you think. 
You understand? Even when we say his imperial majesty and the spirit of God, God is God. You understand? You can't compare that with any of these other guys or ones who want to be like Goya. You understand? You can't even go there. Deuteronomy 4.35. Now, Musa thus admonished them, as I'm admonishing even I and I right now and being admonished by this word, to observe, observe Yahweh's laws and commandments, to study and show yourself approved. You understand? which Musa enjoined upon them that day, that it might go well, that it might be shalom. You understand that it might be salam, that from Babylon we might be able to say so long. You understand? With I and I and with I and I children and our children's children and that generation which is born and even that generation which is to be born. You understand? And that they might long remain, that we might remain for iskazalalem, you understand, in the land, even a millennium, because they're going to take us at least a millennium, you understand, in the land that Ha Elohim was assigning to them for all time, according to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40. Now, in the next portions of this, y'all willing, hopefully, um, and I want you to go on with this to 711, to Deuteronomy 711 because this is a particular reading, and we were using liberally um, the, the Wikipedia or the Wikipedia. If you put the, the Hebrew name and you go to Wikipedia, you'll find that there. And, you know, I know this will be very helpful for ones and ones when you go there because at least this will be at least uh, getting familiar, getting started. You know what I'm saying? You can see the overall idea. It goes through almost a week by week. You know what I'm saying? And all of them are, are up there. But the cities of refuge is the next section, a particular cities of um, refuge. And this is a short part, so we'll include that here, and then we'll pick up on the Ten Commandments in another portion. Excuse me, another portion. There's the cities of refuge. When, when Moshe, Musa, when he set aside, he set aside three cities. Three. He set aside three cities of refuge on the east side on the east side of the Jordanos, to which a manslayer, Nefsa Gadai, you understand, one who killed or slayed a man, a killer, a murderer, you understand, who unwittingly, this means he didn't have, have um, malice or forethought, you understand, he didn't think about this beforehand, but this was, you know, by accident, in other words. He slew a person without having been hostile, without having been hostile to him in the past, you understand? Um, he could escape and live because otherwise there would be, um, you know, the, the, the blood libel and, and blood revenge and relatives would come after you. You understand? But it, it knew that there might be um, accidental things. And this was to prevent um, Hebrew on Hebrew violence. You understand? And, and communities and nations to descend, descend because of that. You see what's going on with black on black crime. Too many, too many black on black especially the youths are killing themselves. You know what I'm saying? There's too much um, 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 of that because one's not chastening the sinner so that others don't follow. Now some get away, others say, why are you going to press charges on me? You understand? Why are you going to snitch on me? You didn't snitch on the other one. Oh, that was your relative. So, you know, we need to really rewire our way of thinking in the time that we have. But these cities were Bezer, the city of Bezer among the Reubenites, was Ramot in Gilead among the Gadites, and was Golan as the Golan Heights in Bashan among the Manassehites, according to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses um, 41 to 43. Now, in continuing with chapter 5, 6, and 7 in the next portion, we're going to touch on the Ten Commandments, what's called the Ten Commandments, but what we know as um, the Ten Words or the Decalogue is one commandment. Remember, the so-called Ten Commandments are really the Ten Words, but one command, one command, one. You understand? We're going to touch on that, um, give a teaching on that. There's a further exhortation to obey and to have obedience to God and to the Word of God. And then the last portion is an instruction. So this is like about three, three uh, many subjects is the instructions for the conquest. 
the instruction about how do we conquer, you understand, our promised land. How do we occupy it, maintain it, and, you know, to those Africans who or even killers Ethiopians who don't, who don't like us or don't want us there, these are instructions for how to deal with that, how to deal with those situations and how to overcome. So these are the other portions that we'll leave or what a feat for, for our next portion, for next, for next time, um, hopefully either over this strong or coming up in the week. But once again, we want to remind ones and ones as we close out, on this um, 45th um, sabbatical um, overview, which is to the Sabbath that's known by Marinya as Lemenuhu, Lemenuhu, and in the Hebrew as Va'etachanan, or Va'etachanan, which means, and I pleaded, and I besought, or, and I begged, and I begged, I beseech, it's Moses, Musa, um, giving a recount of how everything basically came to pass, you know, basically giving a summary of, of the major events in the 40-year experience as one generation is passing away and another generation are coming to that time of responsibility. This is like us, you understand? And with my passing of my earthly father, um... It, and looking over his work, which I'm working on right now, a very, very interesting, it's a, really a shame that this wasn't put out before, this particular work, um, the biblical antiquities of the black race. You understand? Um, one generation is, has, has passed away, and some are still there. A few, a few from the older generation, like Joshua and Kaleb, um, will, will come out with, with the body um, of, of this people exodusing according to uh, Jeremiah 14, I mean 16, chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. Mm. And there's really nothing that the enemies, the Elatoch, um, or the Gentiles, or the Kielis, uh, Ethiopians, or the so-called Africans, or the Arabs, or or, or Al-Qaeda or the terrorists or any of them can really do about it because Yahweh says, and we're going to sum up on that particular word because we need to keep this word, this, this is a beautiful word right here, you understand, um, from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 14 to 15, and we'll end on this particular note and hopefully pick up um, where we left off where the word from Remius was, Nabi Remius was, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahai, which is to say, Jalez, in the Hebrew, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahai, Jalez, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave to their fathers. And just to continue, verse 16, Behold, I will send for many fishes, many fishes, saith Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, many hunters, and they shall hunt them in every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is there iniquity or rebellion hid from mine eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. That explains why it's getting and it's gotten so bad for black folks in the Americas and the diaspora and even, even in Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, on the continent. Because they have defiled my land. They have defiled my inheritance with the carcass of their detestable and abominable things. Other two, I father his father, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles, all the non-black the non, um, 
Ethiopian Hebrew peoples, the, namely the white, Eurocentric, Anglo-American, Europeans. Um, the Gentiles shall come to thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. You know, when we come across a so-called um, white boy or, or, or Rastafari of white or European extraction, and we say, where do they fit in? I don't like white people. That, those people who usually say those things are not born again. I, I just want to just, just keep you on point, those who respond in that way. Because this is how, this is what we should look for. You understand where they say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods to himself, and they are no gods? Question. Last verse. Therefore, behold, look and see, look and sight. I will this once cause them to know. Not to guess, not to assume, not to pretend, but to know. I will cause them to know mine hand. Mine what? That, that right hand, that black power fist, black liberation theology now. You understand? The Beta Israel. You understand? Liberation um, theology. Know mine hand. Know my yod, my yod, my Yemen, and my might. And they shall know that my name is Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, in the Ibraist, in the Hebrew, Yahweh. And in the Revelation, Abu Qadus, who we have known as Kadamawi Haila Selassie, the first power of the Trinity, our God Father in Christ, in Jesus Christos, Yeshua Hamushi. So more to come on these Torah portion and sabbatical scrolls, reading and feeding. Send that salam. Shabbat shalom.